Hey guys, hope everyone is going well. Um, today we're going to be talking about strength training. I've noticed with our, our live streams, we've been going a, um, a, a lot into to goal setting, belief systems, and um, mental strength, mental focus, and talking a lot about those things um, that kind of lost track a little bit with all the, the strength and conditioning stuff and hadn't spoke much about that. And I feel that that's something that um, you guys are going to benefit heaps from. Um, so that's something I want to be able to talk about today is talking about the strength side of things and what we need to be able to work towards uh, with our strength training, with our training uh, during the week and what we need to be doing to be able to set you up for success on the on the weekend. So we'll just wait a little bit for Facebook to do its thing, wait for a few people to be able to jump on the live stream. Um, so that's what we're going to be focusing on today, strength training and methods of strength training and what we need to be able to do with that strength training um, to maximize your performance. Okay, so... The, the first thing that we need to be able to focus on is being able to make sure that we can develop strength, which is going to be able to be usable on the bike. So what we want to be able to make sure is that the, the strength we're developing in the gym reflects uh, similar movement patterns or the same movement patterns as what's happening out on the bike on race day. And the way we do that is through what's called multi-joint movements. So multi-joint movements are movements where we're using multiple parts of the body uh, or, or multiple joints are being used in the one movement, hence multi-joint. Okay, um, these are things like squatting, uh, deadlifting, uh, overhead pressing, bent over rows, bench press. These are just some of the movements, okay? And the reason that we need to use these movements is because they reflect the movement patterns uh, that we use on the bike on race day. And we can reflect them in training and start to use heavier loads with them. Okay, so obviously what do you think is going to happen when we can strip those movement patterns from the bike, do them in the gym with heavy weights, and then put you back on the bike? Obviously everything's going to start to feel a lot easier, okay? Because what we're doing is we're reinforcing the correct neurological movement pattern that we have on the bike. And that's one of the, the bigger issues that racers have is when they, they're developing strength, they see everything um, from, from the outside, okay, or from a, a very far distance in terms of strength training and assuming that just lifting weights is strength training when that's simply not the case. What we need to be able to focus on is being able to get you to a level of uh, strength that's going to be usable on the bike, okay? So we do this through multi-joint movements, and we also do this using free weights as well. So we're using a barbell with weights because this adds a stability element. When we use machines um, or we, we're isolating certain areas, the level of, of stability that we need for those movements to be able to produce force, produce power, produce strength um, is a lot easier for our body. So when we use a machine and we isolate, and let's just say we're doing leg press, okay, we don't necessarily need a tight core. We don't need to brace our upper body um, because we're isolating our legs. Uh, whereas when we're squatting, the whole body needs to be working together as one big system. And that's what we need working when we're on the bike. Everything's working together as one big system. And that's one of the big issues that, or big issues that I find with races is that when they're going and doing their training, they're trying to train everything in isolation. They're not training everything um, as one big unit like they should be, um, exactly like what's on the bike. So the results they get from their training during the week compared to what happens on the track um, uh, are minimal and nowhere near as effective as what they should be. So what we want to be able to work on, implementing those multi-joint movements, okay? Now, when we're doing those multi-joint movements, what we want to be aware of, this is something I haven't talked about with you guys um, too much, is using tempo training, okay? So pretty much what tempo training is, is where we slow down the tempo or, or we control and manipulate the tempo at which we perform the movement. So I'll use back squatting, for example. So back squatting, we have the bar on our back, squatting up and down with the weight. When we're doing that, there's multiple ways that we can actually do that. Number one, you can just move up and down as you normally would with your squatting. Or number two, we can use, we can control the tempo. So what we can do is we can set the pace on the way down. We can set the pace that you sit at the bottom for. We can then set the pace that you set, that you use on the way up and then set the pace that you rest for at the top. So now we break that one movement into four different pieces that we can now control um, and manipulate and use as variables um, to be able to change through the process of our training. Now, the reason that tempo training is so important is because um, we can actually control the movement, and when we're controlling the movement, uh, we're able to increase the level of load, increase the level of fatigue, increase the level of stimulus our body is getting uh, by being able to, to make sure that every part of the lift is being hit. One of the common problems or um, errors that comes up with weight training is um, when you're doing normal movements is what will start to happen is you'll bounce or use your momentum through the movements. 
okay? Um, and when we're using the momentum through our movements, what we're doing is we're actually not using all the parts of the lift that we need to, to be able to develop as much strength as possible. So in other words, with your squatting, what will happen with squatting is the, the quads are most dominant with squatting when you're above parallel, okay? So when your hips are uh, above parallel, when your hips go below parallel, um, our glutes are actually more dominant, okay? And what a lot of uh, people do when they're weight training, specifically races, is they'll use the momentum on the way down. They'll try and use what's called the stretch shortening cycle. We won't go into that too much today. But what they'll do is they'll carry heaps of momentum on the way down and actually bounce out of the bottom to help pull them out of the bottom. So what this means is that they're only getting that little bit of a workout with their quads at the top of the lift because they're trying to bounce out of the bottom. So they're missing that whole bit where they're using their, their glutes, where they're challenging their body even further. They're missing that. Okay, because they're using momentum. So when we use tempo training, we can slow that down to make sure that we hit every every area that we need to, which means that we can, uh, number one, less chance of injury. When we slow down the movement and we, um, we're, we're at a, 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 sorry, got so much to get out. Um, when we are training, okay, and we can slow down the tempo, um, there's a lot less likelihood of injury because we're not moving around, we're not bouncing off our joints, the movement is very, very controlled. So we have a very, very controlled movement, plus we're able to um, greatly increase your strength in a much, much shorter period of time. If we're just moving up and down, we're bouncing up and down, then that starts to become an issue um, because we're carrying momentum through the lift. So really, we're only lifting this much of the lift rather than this much of the lift. We don't get as much benefit from the movement. Um, we have to do a lot more training for a lot longer period of time to get the same level of results when we can just simply slow it down. So we can manipulate with all those or with all sorts of things. So an example for you guys, something you control, uh, something you can try. Three seconds on the way down. So you'll go one, two, three. Hold for three seconds at the bottom. One, two, three. And then explode back up really quickly. And then one, two, three for your second rep, okay? So we're being able to control that tempo is super important. Rather than just trying to load up with super heavy weights all the time and just smashing through, we wanna make sure that um, everything is controlled. We're using that tempo for our strength training um, and we're using that with our, our barbell training, okay? And now, so this is jumping around a little bit. Now going back to, to neurological movement patterns while we use the multi-joint movements. The tempo stuff will help to develop that neurological movement pattern because it's more controlled. So we're gonna have more efficient movement. Um, a neurological movement pattern, for those of you that are going, what the hell does that even mean? A neurological movement pattern is how your brain um, connects with the rest of your body. So what happens is when we're lifting, when we're doing any particular movement, so you're out on the bike, right, and you're racing, and you need to pull the bike in, you need to push the bike out, um, you need to jump up on the pegs. To initiate that movement, the first thing that happens is our brain has to know what to do. And then it sends a message from our brain to our muscles to be able to fire in the right order um, to be able to produce that specific movement. So it gets every uh, muscle group to contract in certain ratios to be able to perform that movement correctly, okay, based on the things that it's done before. So that's why if we can enforce that in training, uh, we can get that super, super efficient. So to, to give you an analogy um, for what, um, what, what this means is think of a maze. Okay, so a neurological movement pattern. Think of a maze. So we've all had a maze, been in a maze, right? I know in Queensland, I remember, I think it was one year when we went to Coolum for the Nationals, they had a, um, there was a real life maze there which was made out of hedges, okay? Um, but for those of you who haven't been there, um, we have like a maze like you have in a, in a children's book, okay? So you start at the start, right? And then you, you have the, the pot of gold or whatever's in the middle. And then you go around and you gotta try and figure out where you're actually going. You gotta figure out the perfect way to be able to get to, to the middle, right? Um, and along the way, you're going to find all these roadblocks. So sometimes you'll pick a way, you'll pick a path, and it'll look like it's the right one, and you'll get there and it'll be a dead end, and it's going to come back and go again. So pretty much that's what our brain does. Now, the first time you do one particular maze, so let's think of just one maze, okay? The first time you do that maze, it'll probably take you a while, okay? So let's just say it takes you 10 minutes. So we do that once, it takes you 10 minutes because you don't know the paths, you've never been there before, you've never done this stuff before, okay? You don't know where the roadblocks are. But the second time when you go back, you know where those roadblocks are. Okay, so you're able to miss them. So the next time you go, you remember most of the, you remember where most of the roadblocks are. There's a couple that catch you out, but most of them you remember. So you actually get it done in seven minutes. Then the third time you do it, then you even you increase your memory even more. Okay, so then we might get it done in five. 
then we might get it done in three the next time. Then we might get it done in two, then we might get it done in one. Until you can just go in there and just draw that line straight in and not make any errors at all. It's exactly how this thing works, okay? Exactly how your brain works with the rest of your body. So what we need to work with with training is in, um, it constantly ingraining those neurological movement patterns um, and doing the, the same movements which replicate the movements from the bike um, exactly like we would with the maze because then it's going to get to a point where our body doesn't really have to think about it, we just do it, okay? Um, and it does it very well and very efficiently and that's what we need to be able to focus on there is making sure that we map those neurological movement patterns so that we can use the strength that we're actually creating in the gym um, with our training or oh, with our racing out on the track, okay? And that's the, the, the biggest factor. When we're using machines, we're doing dumbbells, we're doing isolation exercises, we have bodybuilding splits where we have a leg day, an arm day, a core day, a, um, a calf day, okay? This stuff's not gonna benefit you on the track. Number one, it's built for isolation. It's built for um, being able to increase size, not increase usable strength. Okay, bodybuilders use it. The reason bodybuilders use a, a bodybuilding split is because they fatigue one particular area to the absolute max by having an isolated day and then they don't train it again for another week. Okay, because they get the recovery. We don't want the, we don't want to build size. Okay, we want to build that neuro, neuro, neurological movement pattern. Um, for us to be able to develop and develop that strength to be able to use on the track. And the way we do that is through repetition and doing it multiple times rather than just training it at once a week and, and flogging it till it's dead. Um, so that's what we want to be able to, to work on there, guys. All right. Um, if any of you guys have found this useful, give me a thumbs up. Um, or even share or, or, um, tag anyone that you, you feel, uh, needs to know this or needs to change the way they strength train. Um, and remember, so Friday today, guys, hopefully plenty of riding on the weekend for you guys. Uh, train hard, race harder. See you guys.